Uh, my name is Anne from Orchid Systems, and today I'm going to be running through our new module, EFT Processing for Payroll, which has been done for Canadian and US payroll. For those of you who don't know us very well, at this stage we have over 5,000 sites running our modules in over 60 countries. On average, most sites use two, at least two modules. We have over 400 business partners supporting our solutions around the world. We're based in Sydney, Australia, and over the years, we've been awarded many industry awards. At this stage, we have 13 integrated modules, and by integrated, we mean they're developed 100% in the Sage 300 SDK. And what this means for you and your clients is they should be simple to install, to activate. They support all the standard utilities that Sage 300 supports, for example, dump and load, the reporting utilities, uh, data integrity checks, et cetera. And we've been in business over 25 years. All our modules are geared at improving efficiency and productivity when using Sage 300. I mentioned we had 13 modules and they fall into these five main categories. Collaboration and intelligence, where we have Info Explorer, Notes and Document Management Link. Automation and productivity, we have Process Scheduler and Report Runner. Tailoring your system and systems integration, we have extender, data views, and optional tables. For streamlining financial processes, we have EFT processing, inter-entity trade, and inter-entity transactions. And under the operations management area, we have return material authorizations and bin tracking. But today I'm going to be running through EFT processing, and I'll be concentrating on the payroll functionality that we've recently added. From a customer point of view, what are the qualifying questions? Why would somebody need EFT processing? So if you need to send payments electronically to vendors, employees, or customers in terms of refunds, or collect from your customers using direct debits, uh, if you need to send this all electronically to the bank, that is an opportunity for EFT processing. EFT processing improves the security and the um, around both the sending of transmitting of the file to the bank, but also around the uh, storage of this confidential information. And EFT processing also allows you to cut your costs in terms of writing checks and uh, the production of checks, but also the speed of processing your uh, electronic payments. So in a nutshell, EFT processing automatically creates the files necessary for the bank and, and, and then you send that or import that using the bank software. Uh, it enables reduced costs by cutting down the processing time in, in payments and, and direct debits. And typically you get lower bank fees as you're not having to do as they're not having to deal with checks. You also save time and eliminate errors because you don't have duplicated data entry. Some people are recording the payments they want to make in their AR, AP or payroll system and then manually rekeying those into the bank software. You can also email your remittance advices, which saves time on printing and, and posting remittance advices. You have improved security as we have extensive audit trails on files created, and on um, changing who changed what bank account details and when. I mentioned before, it operates with receipts as well as payments. So receipts from the point of view of direct debits and payments, we do vendor payments, payroll payments and AR refunds. We have over 500 bank formats at this stage and they are actually user definable. So for those of you who want to, you can uh, make create your own formats, but also if you send us the format that's required, typically within two days, we can turn around the new bank format for you. And there's no tr additional charge for that. Uh, you can optionally encrypt the bank and branch uh, uh, bank branch and account number for your vendors, employees, customers, and your own, which improves security as well. And we've done, um, in the last product update of 2018, we've done a lot of work on our French uh, screens. So you should find the French screens um, easier to work with now as well. So I'm just uh, going to concentrate on EFT processing for payroll. And uh, this new visual process flow really describes exactly what you need to do and, and how it all works. 
So you first uh, configure your security because um, we have uh, a number of security groups as to who can enter vendor uh, employees' pay, um, bank account details, who can view it encrypted or unencrypted, and who can amend it and who can approve it. Um, it, under the EFT options, you can figure the way you want your payroll uh, EFT to work in terms of whether you allow posted or unposted uh, checks to be sent to the bank and uh, whether you allow selective payments, etc., from your um, EFT payroll file. You can figure your EFT banks, so against the bank account that you or bank accounts that you're going to be paying your payroll, you can figure which format you want to use, how you want to name the file, uh, if you are FTPing that file directly, um, the FTP details to do that. And then finally, under the employees, you can figure the bank accounts to be used uh, and the amount of the pay to be paid to each of the bank accounts. Once that's all done, you would do your normal processing in the Canadian payroll or the US payroll, and you would generate your checks. Once those checks have been generated, it's at that stage that you would come and create the EFT file based on your configuration. It will select the appropriate uh, checks for payment. You would print um, your payroll advices or email your payroll advices. And then from an audit point of view, you can print your the uh, payroll transfers created. Um, so that's a summary, or you could print the transfer details. So that's in detail which, um, which employees were paid, which amounts to which accounts. And you also have the audit log um, of employees' uh, bank account details changing that can be printed at any stage. And we also have that information in the inquiries. So you could view um, the payroll audit log. So that gives you the detail and uh, the summary of the payroll files created. And you can also view the audit log as to vendors, uh, sorry, employees, bank account details changing. So instead of talking to a screen, I will um, demonstrate that for you. So using the EFT uh, payroll, and we do have the APAR um, visual process flow and the payroll process flow. And remember, you don't see these first time you um, install. You need to go and assign the visual process flows to the required users, including admin. So let's first look at the security groups that we have for EFT payroll. So in under the admin services um, security groups, we have a number of new security groups for the EFT payroll. So you can configure who can uh, view the unencrypted bank account details. So that's your bank account details. Um, who can view the EFT employee EFT, uh, the detail setup. So you might have some people who can only add new or edit the employee details. Um, other people who can view the employee details, and yet other people who can only approve uh, the employee details. So you can have a two-step uh, separation in entering employee details, bank account details, and approving that. Um, you can who who can create EFT payroll transactions, who can view um, the EFT payroll log and who can clear that. So we do keep a log, date and time, which files were created and a full detail of all the bank account details, vendors and the amounts that were paid in that log. So after a year or so, you might want to start clearing down the older transactions or you could leave it uh, for as long as, uh, as long as you want. So after configuring your groups, the different groups of people, as you know, you need to go and assign the different users to those different groups. Then you need to configure the EFT payroll options. So if you have purchased or if your customer has only purchased uh, EFT payroll, then you will only see these two tabs here. Uh, sorry, you'll see that one as well, the global file system numbers um, and the updates. But if you have AP and AR as well as payroll, then you get all the options um, for configuring your EFT. So looking at the payroll tab, so in AP and AR, we, allow, we create an EFT file based on a batch um, and whether or not you allow unposted batches to be sent to the bank. In terms of payroll, we base the creation of the file based on the, peri uh, the payroll period end date. 
And uh, do you allow ranges of pay payroll period end dates to be sent to the bank or just one at the time? So my current configuration, I'm just allowing a single payroll period to be sent to the bank at a time. And within that payroll period, do you allow unposted payroll checks to be selected? In my case, I'm saying no, I can only have posted checks selected and sent to the bank, but if needs be, you could say um, allow unposted checks to be, uh, to be sent to the bank. Um, similar to our um, vendors and customers, when creating this EFT file, do you want EFT to work out who, if you have got the uh, EFT employee set up for that bank, uh, for that payroll, do, is, that, uh, is that the trigger to send the employee's details to the bank? Um, or are you assuming that all your employees are going to be paid by EFT? In which case, if you haven't set up an employee, you want to display an error and abort the export. So that is the safest way to, um, to work with EFT. Um, but if you do want a EFT to decide based on which employees you have bank account details to only create a file, then you can uh, select the first option, skip the employee and continue the export. And finally, um, do you allow selective payments from the payroll uh, period end date range? So based on a payroll period, payroll period end date, do you allow them to go in and say, I would, will just pay um, this employee and this employee, so two employees out of the 10 or 100 that are in that range? Uh, this particular feature uh, is, will be released uh, during February. We haven't quite finished uh, that one off. When you create an employee first time round, uh, employee's EFT details, do you want the status? In my case, I'm just making them active. So if I enter it, it straight away becomes active. But I don't have multiple people entering and checking the EFT employee details. If you do want a separation of duties, you would say the default status is entered and users ABC can enter um, EFT employee details, but only users X and Y can go and take an entered employee details, check the details and make it active. So that's how you can um, have a default a two-step separation in, in creating the employee's uh, details. Uh, you can choose to uh, encrypt the employee BSB and account number. Uh, we recommend that you do this. What that means is that after typing it in uh, straight away, you'll only see uh, a number of asterisks and then the last four digits of the bank branch number and the bank account number. And only those users who have the ability to view the full unencrypted um, a number will see that. In all audit logs, uh, in all reports, it, if you are using encryption, the only thing to appear on the report or the audit log is the last uh, asterisks and the last four digits of the branch number and the account number. Um, and the only way you can see it unencrypted is for that user to log on and um, to view the employee's uh, bank account details. And uh, here you select the primary bank account that you're using for payroll. Um, if you are using EFT uh, for AP as well as payroll, you have a different primary bank account number which will drive the, the mandatory fields or the required fields for vendors and customers, but you might be using a different bank layout for your payroll, so you, you can specify a different primary bank for payroll. Having specified this, you don't need to associate a, a, a bank account um, or EFT file type with any of your employees' details because they will assume this one unless you have yet another one on the employee's bank account. So you might have these 100 employees you pay to bank, through bank account one and it uses format one, but these five are working overseas and um, you're, you're now going to use this overseas account uh, EFT file type to pay those five. So you can have multiple different formats for your payroll for your payroll runs. And in terms of emailing the remittance advices, you can set up your own SMTP details here. Um, the, if you don't fill in anything here, it would use what you've set up for AP if you do have that. Or if you haven't set up anything there, it would use your default email uh, method that you're sending uh, via uh, Sage 300, be it Outlook or if you've configured Sage 300 for SMTP. 
But uh, the reason why, why you might want your own payroll um, details is you might want it coming from a different uh, mailbox from your AP payments and your AR direct debits. After doing your options, you would do your EFT banks. And here you're specifying for which banks, um, for example, uh, you know, when I'm doing payments from my CCC bank, uh, these, this is the details for my payroll files. Uh, you can, if, you, if you're working with a FTP site, you can straight away, FT, once the file is created, it's, it's straight away FTP'd uh, using a password um, and uh, use a login and password to this FTP site, which makes that file a lot more secure than if it's just uh, sitting on the network. In terms of naming the uh, EFT file, you can be using uh, you know, a file sequence number, um, a fixed file name that you can construct using, for example, the period end date, the system date and time, or in my case, I've configured it just to use the period end date. You specify where the file is to go. You ex specify the extension that you want for that file and uh, the EFT file type for this particular bank. So you could have uh, two different uh, banks, some paying some of the payroll, some paying another part of the payroll, and they could have different uh, file types. So I think I've configured uh, CCB um, and also the um, PR bank, which is in sample data used for the majority of the payroll, the payroll um, uh, exports. So these fields here, uh, like destination data center um, and short name, these are variable fields which get turned on per bank account type. Um, and these are required for this, the Canadian standard CPA 005. So you need to fill in um, those particular numbers as you do with AP and AR. Having configured your banks, you would then uh, configure your employees, whether you import this or um, whether you enter this. So per employee, so these employees must exist in um, payroll. So clicking on the finder, I'm seeing the employees out of payroll, um, whereas, sorry, these are the, the employees that I've already set up, whereas this finder here is showing me the employees out of payroll, be it um, I'm currently configured with, um, in this company I'm running with Canadian payroll, but if I had US payroll activated, it would be coming from the uh, UP employee table. So per employee, uh, if you specify a file type at this stage, then you know it would be you know the majority of my employees you wouldn't specify, and it's going to take the default that you've set up in EFT options, and you would only fill in a file type for the um, for those employees that you want to pay using a different file type. If they're all the same and it all goes in the same file, you leave this field blank. Uh, an employee, the EFT details uh, can be, must be active in order to export it to the file. If you've only entered it and nobody's approved it yet, or if somebody's made it inactive and you've included this uh, employee in a payroll run, you'll get an error message uh, when you come to export the file if you have your setting set to, um, you know, not to skip, to display an error message and stop creating the file. So your employees all need to be active uh, for them to be created in a file. For the delivery of the of the email a remit, email remittance advice, you set it here in EFT employees. So you say either you're going to EFT you're going to use the email address set up on the EFT employee, or you can use the email address set up in payroll, or you can set the delivery method to mail, uh, which is the equivalent setting that vendors and customers have. And if, uh, in my case, I'm using my, empl uh, my employee for the EFT email, uh, and then you would need to fill in an email address to deliver the remittance advice. And then for, the, for your payroll accounts, um, so here you can specify as many accounts as you need to split the pay into. Uh, so in this case, I'm saying 50% of the amount that I have to pay the to pay the vendor, 50% is going into this RBC account, ending in 8789, and that's the account number. If you click on the detail, it's on the detail that we have all the optional fields turned on. So as many optional fields that may or may not be turned on for this particular 
bank type, but we're using the default one that's in the EFT options. So in this case, we've just got the uh, payment reference enabled, but for some of the overseas IAT or XML formats that the HSBC uses, you've got to fill in, you know, the country code and a number of different um, accounts. Uh, the the SWIFT number, the I, I, IBN number, a whole lot of information. So you might have, but depending on your bank account type, uh, you might have a number of, you might have a number of different uh, tabs turning on and the fields will be labeled as they are in EFT vendors or customers, prompting you what needs to be entered in uh, those particular variable formats. So in this case, I am uh, putting 50% into the RBC bank, and then I'm doing a fixed amount of $50 into uh, the Bank of Nova Scotia, and the remaining is going into CIBC. So your last line always must be 100% because it's of the remaining amount. So the first 50% is going to be calculated here, then it's going to do $50, and whatever the remaining amount is, is going to be going to CIBC. So you should have the last line always showing, always being remaining amount of 100%. So you'd fill in uh, your vendors and, uh, sorry, your EFT employees as you need to, or you would uh, import. Uh, as this is a header detail relationship, on the import we can only insert new bank account lines, so um, it will always be inserting new. So if you need to amend and you've exported and imported, you're going to double up here, so you need to just um, you know, delete those if you are re-importing all of them from a file. And I should have mentioned uh, if I do any amendments to that, uh, so if I change the bank account details or in fact any of the fields on the EFT employees details, that would be audited in the EFT audit log. So once you've done your setup, uh, now you'd go ahead and do your um, payroll, uh, your time cards and all what you need to do in payroll. And if you're running the Canadian payroll, you would uh, generate the, the paychecks so um, it, you would run this process which would generate the uh, the list of checks to be paid. Um, in the US payroll, same thing, you'd be generating the checks. And it's at that point that those, um, those payments are available to be included in the EFT payroll file. My setting is that I need to post those first, so I would have to go ahead and post them as well. But if you were using unposted, you could then go straight away into the create EFT file. So when you come to create the EFT payroll, uh, the EFT file, you specify the pay period for which you want to export. So I'm just going to use the 10th of January 2020. And based on the bank, um, well, the first bank it finds in, the, in that payroll for that payroll period end date, you it will default through. If you did want to do this using a different format, you would uh, choose the uh, different format, uh, the different format for that particular uh, bank. If you are using variable descriptions and reference fields, you would set those uh, from here and go ahead and create the file. Now, because I've already exported for this uh, pay period, it's going to, t it's warning me that I've already done it and do I want to go ahead and override? In my case, I said yes. Um, and uh, it's uh, exported those seven entries. And as you can see, it's created this payroll file uh, with uh, the extension that I nominated for my P PR bank. So now I could go ahead and print my, uh, print or email my remittance advices, which I can do from here or I can do from this um, icon if that's, how, if that's how I want to do it. So running this icon would open up um, the same file as from the previous screen. So for your uh, uh, payroll remittance advices, you can do to print destination if you just want to preview what you want to do. Um, and uh, you would uh, choose the report format. And uh, we have a security group that only allows um, some people to select a different report format at the time of printing. And uh, you've got the uh, remittance advice layout, uh, email template layout that you can uh, use um, to uh, for, the, for sending the remittance advice. So in the 
in the email remittance advice, you can use, and if you uh, click on the F1 help, it'll show you all the variables you can use. But you, by, by going dollar employee, you can pick up any of the field names of the um, CP or UP uh, employee table. So you can include any variables that you have in CP or uh, the UP employee. And I've included the employee uh, code, uh, full name and uh, their first name. And then you've also got uh, a number of fields from our payroll log. So the bank, the bank name, um, the amount if you want, but typically you would do that, uh, those details in the attached PDF. Um, and if you've already emailed some of the remittance advices, you could uh, leave this checkbox off so it would only email the remaining remittance advices that you haven't yet sent. Or if you want to force them all to go through again, uh, you could select from here and print. But because if you've exported this file a number of times, you will have multiple payment runs sitting in the EFT log. So if you have exported multiple times before, you should not print the remittance payroll devices from here. You should do it from the um, audit log because here you can, when you're viewing the audit log, you've got each of the file creation numbers, you've got um, the date and time it was created, who created it, what the total dollar value of that payment batch was. Um, and if you uh, double click on it, you will see the individual details of all the pay, the pay records that were made and all the bank account details, et cetera. And if you print the remittance advice from this screen, you're, you're doing your remittance advice per payroll run, not per, um, you know, not for the entire uh, payroll that you might have, because you, know, you might have done three or four exports for that particular one. So here you're doing it by um, just by the EFT creation number. So same same prompts really, except this time it's passing in the um, 34 as our creation number, and it's only going to do those vendors uh, that are in that particular chunk. So I have emailed uh, some previously. So this is an example of what that email template looked like. I did include the bank name and bank code and the uh, amount, um, but uh, typically you wouldn't do that. Typically it would all be in just in the PDF. What we're working on now is encrypting this uh, PDF. So, uh, well, providing a password for it. So you'll be able to enter a password or have the system generate a password uh, on the EFT employee. Um, and then when this EFT file is created, that password would be put in the, um, in the file. And then only um, if you know the password, uh, you'd have to key it in when you double click to open up this, um, this particular PDF. So that will be coming out um, in February along with the selective payments. So just looking at the uh, reports we have, um, or I can show them via the inquiries. So we, we've seen, we've got the view clear um, payroll log. So this, I can clear the old ones if I want to, um, but double clicking on any one of them uh, shows you the details of the vendors, uh, the employees at the time that this file was created. So it's going to be the bank account at that point in time. You might have changed it subsequently, but that is the bank account that was used at that point in time. And we also have the um, the audit log of employees' bank account details changing. So this is combined with the vendors and customers one. So here we can see um, my employee, uh, the bank account details change from from nothing to to uh, this, and then the uh, the account number changed from from this to this, etc. And I'm currently filtering on the account number. Um, we do have a slight issue at the moment that uh, that filter is 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 uh, fixed on that, um, so we're fixing that up as a product update as well. So here you should be able to see all the fields, not just the account numbers that are that have been changed. And that's really um, our EFT uh, processing. Uh, just with as with those inquiries, you have them also. Um, in in a report format as well, if you need to print those off as part of your payroll run or as part of your checking. So just go back to 
my PowerPoint presentation. So just before I go through a summary of what we've seen, I see we've got a, a lot of questions um, posted. So let me just uh, go to the question box. So the first question is, if a customer already has ORCID EFT, are they automatically getting EFT payroll with the latest upgrade? No, uh, they need to purchase um, uh, EFT payroll. So there's a, uh, you know, it's, it's a separate module by activation. It installs as one, but by your activation code, you will either see APAR or you'll see payroll options, or you'll see both if they have purchased it. So they do need to purchase EFT for payroll if they want to use that functionality. Um, another question, for payroll advices, when we use PrintBoss for emailing, we typically add a password on the advice of PDF. Do you have a similar functionality as Paystub's email require a second set of security? So I think I did, maybe this question came before um, I showed the PDF of the remittance advice. We are working now on applying a password to that PDF file and that should be released uh, during February. Is there an email template included with the install? No, there's no uh, template included in the install, but if you um, are doing the email template, the actual wording, no, there isn't. There is an e the PDF is included with the install, um, so it's called EL Payo One. Um, so that is, uh, you know, the sorry, not the PDF, the RPT. So there is a default uh, report file for for the uh, payroll remittance advices. Um, but there's no email template. But if you download uh, the ORCID sample data, uh, which was loaded up on Monday, it ha does have an email template in that. So you can export and import from there. Is the password uh, go specific to the employee? It will be specific to the employee. So you'll be setting a password at an employee by employee level. Um, and th that's what it'll be included in the PDF. So Sage 300 would think a live check was created for the employee uh, because you won't have EFT tab on the employee record. That's correct. As you would leave Save 300 uh, creating a live check, uh, whether you know, and set your print options from that point of view. Um, and then, so from a Sage 300 point of view, it assumes that you're printing that check. Um, and all the EFT details are on the EFT employee. So the question carries on to say it isn't like AP because you you can have a payment type that is that is other because you can have a payment type that is other than in payroll. So in payroll, you would just um, you, you know set the setting however you, however you want to produce the the check from a payroll point of view. With, and, and you would use payroll to control how you're going to print that and so on, although you don't need to print it because you would use, be using EFT. So when, when EFT looks at that payroll check, uh, the payroll checks, it's just looking for by period end date. It's not looking for, for a particular payment type or check type. I hope that answers the question. Um, another question, what about the actual pay stub detail that is needed for gross wages, et cetera? So at this stage, we're just doing the EFT remittance advice, but what we're investigating is the ability to email the pay stub. And I believe there's a um, another document that goes out called the T4 that gets emailed to uh, employees. So we haven't done that yet, uh, we're, and we're still evaluating the feasibility, but it's our intention to do the uh, pay stub as well as the uh, any uh, additional tax um, that might be needed. I know in Canada, Canadian payroll, it's called the T4. Um, Susie, I don't know if you can tell me what it's called in the US payroll. Um, that's what we're currently evaluating and doing at the moment. So that's another question about the um, payroll stub. Uh, would it be possible to send the pay stub via email through EFT processing? Uh, yes, we're working on that. Um, uh, we believe we can do that. So in, in the February update, we'll be emailing the um, the pay stub as well as the T4. 
Another question about the EFT advice, does it not have the calculation details? No, it doesn't. So the EFT remittance advice is dollar value only of what's been transferred into the bank, um, but we're working on the other two uh, reports. Um, another one about the password I've answered. Um, does it employ on an employee level security? I'm not quite sure I understand that um, question, Dick. Um, if you could give me a little bit more details on that. Is it available for 2018 only? Yes, at this point it's available for 2018 only. Um, Mid-Feb we'll be releasing uh, 2016 and 2017, so only supported versions of Sage 300. Uh, there's a question from, from Dick, would really like an email template for Canadian T4 slips. So w when, we, when we look at um, how we produce the T4, um, and, and we could also look at uh, the remittance advice as well, if it makes sense, we could have uh, default te email templates uh, being uh, installed as you activate. So I'll, I'll take that offline with you, Dick, and, and we'll go through what's needed there. And if it does help you out to do email templates uh, predefined, also for remittance advices, we can have one activating with it. Is the inquiry screen for the audit log to have a filter to only show payroll related transactions or AP transactions? Yes, it is. So uh, that inquiry screen, the filter has been fixed at account number at this stage and, and we're not quite seeing everything. Um, that is a bug. Uh, it will be, you will be able to go control F and filter like you can in bin tracking, et cetera, and, and filter for employees only, account numbers only, or changes done by Anne only, so on. There's a long question here. If Sage 300 thinks it's a live check, I can see that it being an issue for clients creating positive pay from their live checks. Uh, payroll processing would potentially have to use a selection list and separate calculation uh, and print runs for EFT and non-EFT employees. Um, if you have EFT and non-EFT employees in the same payroll run, so you'll be able to create a um, payroll file for both your, um, separately, for your checks that you're physically producing and that you would do, you would create a positive pay format for the bank and then a different format for those uh, employees, you'd, you'd control it by the EFT uh, file type on the employee. So for those who you want positive pay, you would choose the positive pay um, EFT file type on the EFT employee. And for those that you want a real EFT payment, you would choose that particular file type. And you would run the create EFT file for that payroll period twice using the different file types and you would get your two separate files. Okay, thanks Susie, it's a W2, so I might reach out to you later um, and see how we can produce the W2. So that's for the US payroll, the uh, corresponding T4, whatever these codes stand for. If a user's made a mistake on the bank account number, does he need to reverse the check, change the bank and post the check again? Or can he just change the bank and generate the file again? So right at, uh, you know, the, the proper process should be to reverse the check, uh, change the bank, uh, regenerate the check. But when uh, in February, when our selective payments is released, you will be able to just change the bank account detail, do another run for that payroll period, and select the individual payment uh, that you want to do. So if your um, customer likes a tight control around that, then we would recommend reversing the check changing the bank and sending it out again. But if they're a little bit loose around those order controls, then they can turn on selective payments, select the individual payments they want to do and recreate the file. Oh, okay, so you use, um, if an employee is terminated in payroll, will the user need to change the status in EFT for payroll? Uh, yes or no, um, because there'll be no more checks for that employee, um, it won't matter what status it is in, in EFT payroll, the but you can if you want to go. Uh, you would have to do it manually. We don't have. We haven't automatically uh, flagged the the employee as inactive when you terminate. 
but we do have in the periodic processing, which I forgot to show you, we do have um, a clear down, so you can clear down EFT employee details if the EFT employee if the employee has been deleted from payroll, it will clear down old records. Not if they've been terminated, only if they've been deleted. Another comment on the pay stub. The pay stub is critical. So yes, we understand that and we're working on that. Um, users may have access to only process specific employees. No, we haven't taken that into consideration. Um, but Dick, I'll, I'll chat to you later about that as well. Uh, at this stage, somebody who can email, who can do the payroll run, they, they, it's not security driven. It's done for all. I'll, I will have a look in the payroll options. Thanks. Uh, yes, there is special bundle processing when purchasing EFT. Um, there is a, a bundle price for APAR and payroll, and uh, there's a special price. Uh, for adding payroll uh, for the next uh, three months as an introduction. But contact Rob about that. There's a question is saying, will this work with 2018? Yes, the currently released uh, EFT processing is for 2018. So it's EFT processing uh, PU1, which includes payroll support. Um, and we will be doing uh, the next PU level up for 2017 and 16 uh, during February. Another question, Quebec payroll, we need a T4 and Relevé 1 to be emailed um, for the same option. So, uh, Paraman, I'll, I'll reach out to you and make sure that when we're doing the T4s that we, that we, we do whatever we need to do for the Relevé 1s as well. Thanks. So, I think, um, I think that's all the questions that I've gone through. The main summary why you would want to use EFT uh, payroll um, is for all the security features we have. Um, you know, this, uh, the bank account details are encrypted. They're not just sitting in open optional fields or um, in uh, unencrypted in the in the database. You can FTP uh, files, EFT files, if you want to make your EFT files more secure. And we have multiple levels of approval for the employee's bank account details. It's fully auditable in terms of who changes what. Uh, when and who creates what files, um, and that can be retained as long as you need. Um, it's configurable, so new bank formats can be included free of charge, or you can create them yourselves if you want to, um, so it's easy to implement and install. And you can email the remittance advice, and soon password protect that PDF, and hopefully the T4s and W2s and Relevé 1s. Um, and also, it's it's easy to install. It's just another um, module that you activate as you normally do, um, and the configuration of it is all through Sage 300. You're not having to um, fiddle around with uh, printer drivers and so on. So uh, thank you very much for attending. For those of you who are not aware of our new website, www.orchid.systems. Uh, if you go through there, you can download the latest sample data for 2018, which includes um, payroll being configured, both US and uh, UP payroll. And uh, there's also um, demo scripts and uh, training guides, etc., cetera, on, on our website. So thank you very much. Uh, can you get your dealer demo? Um, another question. Yep, it's the NFR codes that we have up there will activate for uh, payroll. So if you just download uh, EFT PU1 for 2018 and install, um, you will be, you will have the payroll options. Uh, but also a reminder to download the ORCID sample data. So Canadian payroll is configured in ORC LTD and US payroll is configured in ORC Inc. 2. And your existing NFR codes will activate and um, will activate payroll as well as AP and AR. But for any clients uh, adding US payroll to their current configuration, they will um, need to get a new activation code from us. So thanks very much for attending, and um, we hope to see you all at TPAC at the end of February. Thanks. Bye.